Bahrain says the new field off its west coast contains an estimated 80 billion barrels of shale oil and 400 billion cubic metres of gas. The kingdom now aims to attract foreign firms to develop the field, which it hopes will be productive within five years. In a message to Money Talks, the vice chairman of the Bahrain Petroleum Company, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, described it as walloping. Uh, we are very confident on uh, the ability to produce gas at competitive rates uh, and prices. Uh, Bahrain, as a small country, is a very large consumer of gas. We depend on it for industrial uh, sectors and for power and water desalination. Uh, so it's very exciting to add uh, a new resource to the Bahrain gas field. Let's go to Paris now and joining us from there is our editor-at-large, Craig Capitas. Hello, Craig. Now, look, we spoke about this find uh, a couple of days ago. Now we have a few more details about it. Um, but how does this compare then to Saudi Arabia's reserves? Well, are we talking oil or are we talking gas? Because if we're talking oil, Saudi's the leader. I won't go into the billions of barrels. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to petroleum, there's the law of diminishing uh, marginal utility is going on here. The value of oil is going to continue to come, come down as, you know, the world goes more green. But natural gas is something else. And the amount of the find at this field would make uh, about, you're looking maybe 20 trillion cubic feet of gas. That would no, uh, make Bahrain the number four producer in the world behind Russia, Iran, and Qatar. It's a very, very big win-win deal for the Bahrainis. So this is interesting. So it brings Bahrain back into the big leagues of oil producers, possibly oh, yeah. bringing it back uh, into OPEC, or would that perhaps not be uh, on the cards? Uh, there's so many unanswered questions from are they going to... Uh, uh, go out and get some bond money to do this drilling, or are the Chinese going to come in and offer the money to make it part of their uh, one road uh, initiative? Uh, it's still too early to tell. Uh, as our report noted, uh, you're looking at, at minimum five years before they get anything up out of the ground. But, you know, it's time to issue bonds now if they want to, and I'm sure the Chinese are quite interested in this as well. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up the financing aspect of this, because part of the problem that Bahrain faces is that its reserves have been falling, um, it, the, the, its risk profile has been increasing, so it's been increasingly difficult for it to borrow money on the international markets, and all of this because it is still not yeah. recovered from the big drop in oil prices from 2014. So <clears throat> is this going to change all of that for Bahrain immediately? Well, I'll go out on a limb and say it's going to, over time, change it. And perhaps it shouldn't be Saudi Vision 2030, but perhaps Bahraini Vision 2030. And I'll tell you why. There, Bahrain has, a, in the neighborhood, of 900,000 Bahraini citizens. The Saudis have 22 million Saudi citizens. This is going to be such a boom for the Bahraini economy, and it's going to help Bahrain because Bahrain has been ruled by the same family since the, uh, I think it was uh, 1778, and they, the country has a long history of business and trading. They're very, very good at it. In, in fact, they were the first post-oil economy to get into banking and tourism long before the Emiratis or anyone else. This makes, because Bahrain has fewer people, this, this, this is going to put them on the same stage with Qatar. That's where we're going. Ah, that's going to be a very interesting development indeed. Craig Peters in Paris, thank you so much.